Hi, Amanda Fisher, and today I want to talk about and continue the conversation around the number one number you need to know in business. But today I want to talk about product based businesses. So if you haven't, go back and watch the previous episode because we talked about how these the same number but how to calculate it for a service based business and some of what's in that is also relevant for product based business so very quickly i'm going to run through the few bits that are relevant but do go back to the previous episode because it it will give you a lot more detail so the number one number that i'm talking about is your break even number and in a product business you've got a more complicated calculation than service businesses and you probably know that but the starting point for everyone is knowing how much money you need to pay your personal bills so starting off looking at your home budget how much money do you need to pay or contribute to the household costs rent mortgage phone electricity utilities internet motor vehicles if they're not in the business holidays entertainment food that's an important one um and uh, uh kids school fees kids clothing you know extracurricular extracurricular activities holidays everything that you would normally spend at home you need to work out what that is and if that's split amongst different members of the family what your contribution needs to be for that now if you're already drawing a particular set amount out of your business as a salary wage or drawings depending on your business structure that's great but just double check that you have got the right number for the purposes of your household and you're not going backwards on that because you need to look after number one first you need to look after your personal needs then you can look after your business needs as business owners we often do it the other way around but we do need to make sure the home bills are being paid the next thing i said was to pull out the profit and loss statement from your accounting system preferably the last 12 months and if you need to if your system allows you to do pick up that 12 months great if you need to go back from last month to end of last financial year and then the rest of the fine the rest of the 12 months in the prior financial year figures and do that then do that but we need to get 12 months because we want to make sure that we don't miss any of the annual costs that come through have a good detailed look at those expenses identify anything that isn't continuing identify how much of an inflation uplift you may have to apply to some and if there are expenses that you're going to spend more on and you know that already then what those numbers are want to work out what the total per annum is All right so your total annual costs to keep the doors open to keep everything happening now i want you then to put that number aside for a minute then I want to look at your sales and cost of sales in a product based business you know you have to buy your products you've got freight you've got possibly import duties and 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 uh, costs associated with bringing the goods into the country if that's what you have to do packaging costs potentially if you're putting multiple pieces together you know potentially some costs in in manufacturing or creating a product all of those you may also if you're online and you're doing deliveries you may have a delivery component and if your delivery component is included in your sales price i.e you don't charge extra for delivery then that's part of your cost of sale if whatever delivery charges you do charge your client customer for that then you can ignore the delivery cost to customer because they're paying for it so that's a kind of in and out as long as that is the case so i'm simplifying a little bit because i can't cover every detail in this 
But what it, so what you then have is the cost of purchase of product, import costs, freight costs, del yeah, packaging costs, those things that get you your total cost of your product that you're selling. And then of course you know you've got your sale price. You've, most product businesses have thousands of lines in them. For the purpose of this, we're going to add them all up together. And as long as you assume that the rough mix of, of different product sales will continue and it won't vastly change, then we can calculate your gross margin. So your gross margin is calculated by taking the total income, total costs of sale, so those product costs, freight delivery import costs, packaging costs, all of that. Take that number off your sales number and you've got your gross profit. To calculate gross margin, you take that number and divide it by your sales number and apply and calculate that as a percentage. One of the areas that I find some people get very mixed up on is they say, oh, I've got 100%, I've got 100% margin. But they actually don't. What they're selling is that it costs them $5, they're selling for $10, so they've made 100% markup. But a markup is not margin. Different numbers start with M, a bit confusing. So markup is how, what percentage, often it's a percentage, that you add to your costs to determine your sale price. And use my example again, $5 cost, $10 price, you've done 100% markup. Yep, fair enough. But the reality is, if you sell for $10, you've got costs of five, you've made a $5 gross profit. So your gross margin is $5 gross profit divided by $10 sales, which gives you a gross margin of 50%. So just be very wary that you're not thinking of your markup, it's the amount, the net, your gross profit as a percentage of sales. I want you to take that and look at, if you've got seasonality in there, you may need to fiddle around with that a little bit, but have a look at, on average over the last 12 months, what is your gross margin percentage? So using my example there, gross margin percentage of 50% makes my, me easy to move forward on this calculation. Go back now to your total expenses. So there's all the other expenses, the wages, the rent, everything else that you need to spend to keep the doors open and promote and do what you do. And let's, for the purpose of my calculation of minutes, say your total expenses, completely unrealistic, but total expenses are $100,000 for 12 months. If you've got a retail business, my guess is that you'll be open 52 weeks of the year. If you've got an online product business, you'll be open 52 weeks of the year. So for the Per, the, one of the differences between this and the service-based business that I talked about previously is your costs should be being recovered weekly every week of the year for 52 weeks. If, however, you do shut down for a couple of weeks, then what I would do is take your total expenses, that 100000 I've just said, and divide it by the number of weeks that you are open for business. And then we'll start talking about a weekly number. But if we work on 52 weeks, I've got $100,000 of expense and I'll have a gross margin percentage of 50%. What that means is that I would need to be earning, selling $200,000 worth of product in order to make $100,000 of gross profit which will cover my 100,000 of expenses and give me a zero profit, zero loss, break even. But it's not just about breaking even, it's about making profit. So your break even is your baseline. You really do need to be looking at setting a target goal that is greater than that to make a profit level and one that's a bit of a stretch goal that you'd like to achieve if you possibly could. But you may need to 
keep these numbers as accumulating numbers because you may find that your sales revenue is a bit cyclical, a bit seasonal, maybe some weeks better than the others, some months better than others. So you may need to be keeping this as an accumulating number so that you can identify how you're tracking overall over an extended period of time. But the key is that it's designed to take some stress off your shoulders to make you feel more confident about how the business is going. So I challenge you to take some time, put aside an hour maybe to pull out the profit and loss from your accounting system, have a good hard look at those expenses, work out your gross margin percentage, identify what your break-even number is and start to track it and see whether you don't get the benefit that I found doing it myself, that my clients are saying they found when we've worked on this with my clients exactly the same thing and see whether you're not feeling better about how your business is going and feeling more confident about where the business is going and the profits you're going to make. But don't forget, if your numbers change, if there's an increase in your costs, you need to reset that break-even number. Go ahead, give it a go, give it a try and see how you're, you feel about your business and the numbers.